Welcome to another In Wheel Time podcast, a 30-minute mini version of the In Wheel Time car show that airs live every Saturday morning, 8 to 11 a.m. Central. Car Talk. Podcasting and streaming from Studio A, inside the Sugar Shack Studios, it's the In Wheel Time Car Talk Show. Just ahead, we hope to get a hold of Pennzoil's Michael Thomas and how EVs are changing automotive product development. A lot is my guess. Uh, you'll hear my thoughts on a week with the new Subaru Impreza RS. And Conrad has the cruise in calendar just ahead on this episode of the In Wheel Time Car Talk Show. Howdy, along with Mike out of this world, Mars, fiddling with his phone like a little teenage girl. <laughs> King Conrad DeLong. We always need more Jeff Zekin. I'm Don Armstrong. Glad you could join us on this uh, Saturday. It's a beautiful Saturday here in Houston, Texas. If you're wondering, well, I'm listening to a podcast. This is not Saturday. Well, so we take every 30 minutes a podcast out of the show. And make out six. Of the three out, make six of them. And so they air uh, Sunday through, through Friday. Friday. So you get a fresh podcast every day of the week in case you miss one. From the new upgraded studio. Ta-da. Yes, and we hope that you like our new look. Um, well, it's kind of new for us anyway. Logo is down here instead of back there. We got some artwork up here. We're trying to be fancy. I hope you appreciate it. Got some backlighting. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know if anybody's known, but I've been changing the color. Have you, have you been break. doing that, or has yeah, you been doing it by uh, no, itself? No, I've been doing it. Okay, yeah. well, thank you. I think Jeff just a glow there yeah. behind him. And yeah. It's purple it's, now. It is. No, it's actually blue. It's supposed to be blue. Okay. Is it? No, well, it's... The button I pushed was blue. Oh, okay. Okay, well, thank you very much. <laughs> I, I've i been dying to do this story while we're oh. waiting for the, the oh guy boy. from Pennzoil. Here we go. <clears throat> Nine old tools almost nobody uses anymore, and I think I would fall into that category myself. Yeah, you but are a tool. I am a tool. <laughs> Here's one. Peter. That's O-Tool. That's O-Tool. Um, spark plug gap tool. When's the last time you used one of those? Uh, last time I changed spark plugs? Yeah, I was going to say, I yeah. use it all the time. Do you really? Yep. Use it for the mower, too, when you change the plug. Well, those spark plug gap tools can still be found in the impulse by section of your favorite parts store. Mm-hmm. Uh, these have all but been eliminated from regular use by the growing popularity of iridium and platinum plugs. These rare earth metals are extremely resistant to degradation, but when it comes time to set the proper gap between the ground strap and electrode, they are very delicate. That's why the factory sets the gap when the plug is produced. Yeah, most most plugs that you buy are gapped in the in the box. Yeah, but I always check them. Mm-hmm. You know, you do never you ever do you ever have to adjust them? I yeah. never do. Yeah, you know, if somebody gets a little rough with a box and drops, I them guess. And yeah. But it's you rare. Know, nothing worse than getting rough with the box. You know, I'm not even going to go there on that one. <laughs> Here's one. And actually, if we looked in that toolbox, you will find a... Torque wrench. Dwell meter. Oh, yeah. Oh. Probably in the bottom drawer. I don't know. It's in there somewhere. But, dwell, uh, you know, um, 50 years ago, tune-up uh, of an engine centered on the ignition system. Right. Breaker points are critical to a properly functioning ignition system, and timing how long those points are closed, the dwell, determines how much charge is built up in the ignition coil and thus discharged through the spark plug. Mm -hmm. Poorly timed ignition discharges wasted energy, but electronic ignition setups have never been more reliable or polarizing, but we'll leave that verdict up to you. Setting the point gap properly is usually enough to keep an engine running well, and modern malf- uh, multifunction timing lights can include a dwell meter. And there was a period of time where you needed a dwell meter to tune a carburetor. Yes. And they had the electronic carburetors, and I used my dwell meter doing the carburetor as well. That's right. Because you could tell. Oh, that's too far. Back it off a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Uh, distributor wrench. When's the last oh, time you yeah. used it? Dis- remember the distributor, yeah. the funny-looking thing? Yeah, that's yeah. All a little L-shaped thing. Yeah. yeah. Distributor wrench. I've yeah. got two I, of them. I got one in I've there. Got, I've got one that's a half inch, which is typically a Ford, and then I got one that's a 916. This is next to his dwell meter. Typically GM. Yeah. Maybe we should put those on display for yeah. everybody. Say, oh, look, a bunch of old guys with some old tools that nobody, well, they're all old. <laughs> nobody uses any of them anymore. Even old guys, <laughs> old guys have old tools. <laughs> There's that. A uh, pre-OBD2 diagnostic scan tools. Uh-huh. Tech, tech 1 
is what in GM's phrase it was called was a Tech One. Now they just plug into the OBD2 and run it through a, a laptop. Yeah. But there are cer- certain brake systems you had to have a Tech One to diagnose certain brake systems. Never, I never, I was not, that was not my era. Mm-hmm. Uh, distributor machine. Oh, Remember yeah. distributor mm-hmm. machines? Turn it and turn the distributor. <laughs> Had that go again? <laughs> <laughs> and you could uh, not only just tune the distributor for the points, but you could tune the vacuum advance of That's the right. distributor yes. as well. Yeah, um, you take the Allen wrench and stick it in the vacuum hole. Mm-hmm. And there, turn it. And turn it. Thank you. Yep. Here's one. And I actually saw an ad for a used one. They can't give them away. It's kind of like reel-to-reel tape recorders. An engine analyzer. The Sun 2000. Oh, the big <laughs> one. It hung from the rail in the ceiling. Oh, I actually, when I worked at, a, at, a, at the Oldsmobile dealership. Yeah, all the wires were chewed up. Yeah. Either that or the one that I'm familiar with was a big roll-around cabinet that was probably six, both, feet, yeah. six feet tall. Yeah. And it took up a huge amount of wall space in the tune-up, guys. Slot and and it had an oscilloscope on it, so yep. you could look at the secondary ignition on the oscilloscope. <laughs> yeah. The thing I used it most for was to charge condensers. I'd charge a and then say, "Here you go," and, and throw it to somebody. They <laughs> yeah, catch, catch it, it. And zap the crap out of them. <laughs> yeah, oh God. Yes, I, I what do. What a guy! Re- yeah, <laughs> yep. Uh, most pneumatic tools. For home shops. Yep. Gone away. Gone away. Everybody's gone with the uh, the wireless yep. Makitas um, yes. and stuff. So yep. Yeah, you know, I still have my my air air air, yeah, air wrench and yeah. I, I, I yeah, guess if impact. I looked in there I'd probably I find I still got one. an impact and uh, ratchet. the ratchet. And, and then I have a butterfly as well, which is the fastest. Yeah, my ratchet. butterfly died, but you know, and I got a pumpkin compressor. It'll almost run the impact. You know, it's just not big enough to hold enough volume, but it'll it'll run the ratchet. And I've I've since bought a, well. an electric uh, battery. Oh yeah, ratchet or not ratchet impact. impact. Wrench, yeah, yeah, that's what I had up here last week when we was working was the battery powered. Okay, okay, here's what one, here's one that I'm not familiar with the words: Babbitt bearing molds or machining jigs. Machining jigs, I. I got that. But what is a Babbitt bearing mold? So in a, think of a main bearing or a rod bearing, Mm -hmm. the softest material in there that you could literally scratch with a thumbnail, that's the Babbitt. So you would Ah. would put the bearing in. Now, this is like real old school. And you would smear fresh Babbitt in there, and that mold would hold it in place so that you got the correct depth of Babbitt. See, I even had when I was turning wrenches. I even had a an old valve grinding machine. Yes, with uh, where you could cut the valves. Yep. And then you had the uh, the um, the electric spinner that you could uh, seat the you know cut the valve seats as well. We had one of those machines in a cage at Richardson Chevrolet. Mm-hmm. Nobody usually used it, right? But it was there. Apparently, at some point they used it because you replaced the valves. <clears throat> yeah, because it's oh, cheaper yeah. too. Yeah. Well, I thought that was fun. Mm-hmm. And then, this one I'm familiar with, the split rim tire tool. Oh. Oh, that'd kill you if you yeah. didn't do it didn't right. Didn't do it right. It's yeah. exactly right. Now, they have a really thick cage that they use to blow up tires and, you know, high pressure stuff. So that when it does go, when it does release, it stays within the cage. Well, and even when you go, because, you know, I just recently got my tires done at discount. Uh, every time they do a tire, that final last air piece until the, the bead seat yeah. pop out, they do put it inside that cage. Yep. Which is for the safety of the, the handler. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And everybody in the shop. But and with it, the split ring, that thing was really thick and it was basically spring steel Mm -hmm. because you could bend it a little bit and i'll tell you what it goes shooting across the shop and oh it'd shoot 100 feet in the air if you did it the wrong way you better stand back and those beads aren't seated once they do that the beads aren't seated on the on the tire until after a few miles are driven where you drive it it flexes and gets itself actually already worked all the way in yeah well talk to me about tire beads and beads on wheels. What about Craftsman torque wrenches, Don? Yeah, let me, let me tell you about my my it's, Craftsman it's not with torque wrench. <laughs> it was, you know what? When the we show was studio, going really well, 
<laughs> See, we, we did Jaguar it. and torque wrenches today. <laughs> I want you to know that I finally threw Happy that. Happy New Year. Yeah, I finally threw that. George Skelton was tired of hearing me talk about the damn Craftsman torque wrench that they wouldn't take back because... It wasn't warranted it, for it, life. It was warranted George, for George life. George has already posted on here. <laughs> well, that person, that, that individual that denied your claim is now VP of, of Customer Relations. Yeah. At that, Snap-on Tools. Yeah. I'm sorry, sir, that, that we, we don't take... Because they sold the entire line of craftsmen to somebody else. Well, and because torque wrenches, to a large degree, are a thing of the past. Now they go with these angle meters. So you get... You get the uh, the bolt <laughs> down to a point, and then you put an angle meter on it, and you put 45 degrees on it all the way around, and you do another 45 degrees on it all the way around. And they say that that bolt stretches a little bit, and that's a better measurement of the compression load on the gasket than a torque meter is. I will tell you this. That one that George sent me works just fine. Thank you, George. 100 pounds of torque on the wheels on the Corvette. And I haven't been in any machine shops lately or or quite some time, but I don't remember ever seeing somebody say, okay, let's go 45 degrees. No, No, they're just cranking. No, they're putting a torque wrench on it. And that's what they do at Discount Tire. And Yeah. No, they well, have that, after the, there's a load on the tire. Torque, they have that torque to yield yeah. thing. Yeah. And speaking of George, we had the Perini uh, luncheon last week. Thank we you did. very much. Yeah. Yes. Oh, uh, yes. It was wonderful. It was. It was very good. Thank you, George Skelton, Again, for our thank you. our Perini lunch. We love that. And we made it every year. As a matter of fact, the girls even commented on yep. you know. This started off as uh, some sandwich meat, and now it's turned into this thing. Ex- you know, a lot of desserts. Bring something. Yeah, we had desserts. Uh, well, Kathy, Kathy made that. The in wheel time ladies auxiliary. They they helped out. That's that's exactly right, and it was delish. I missed out on the on the whiskey. Uh the whiskey cake. cake? Yeah. yeah what do you, how did you miss oh, out? I think I probably left a little early. I had a couple that, of Oh, you know, she, she was cooking it, or she was baking it, or warming it up. But it, actually, the whiskey is in the sauce, not the cake itself. So when you layer it with the sauce and, and the that caramel sauce, stuff, had, that's where the whiskey's at. I had a pedicure. Um, but, and it, <laughs> we had some for the next couple of days after that. It was, good. It was, it was delish. The meat? Spectacular. Is, yeah. Yeah, seriously, you could cut it with a fork, mm-hmm. and uh, it looked like it was half raw. It was delicious. Ooh, it was delicious. It was perfect. Absolutely perfect. I just figured it was the lighting, crummy lighting in the kitchen. <laughs> well, there's that, too, but that had nothing to do with the, the meat. Close your eyes and just eat it. It yeah. was so good. We had some horseradish sauce, and we had, we had the, the fixings were mm-hmm. out. Well, it was coleslaw. There was twice-baked potato casserole. Yep. uh the, the main course, obviously, and, and bread, pumpernickel. Was it pumpernickel? Bread? No, it was uh, some some of that uh, in store cooked sourdough. Uh huh. One was sourdough, and the other was roll kind of thing. Mm, yeah, it was really good. Yeah. Thank it, you, it George. Was- Thank you, George. Appreciate you. you Thank bet. you. Yes, 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 yes. George uh, George uh, Skelton is our number one fan. Always. Yep. And I hope you- I hope George got my little video that we did i sent it to him i had to send it in three parts because you know too stupid big. yeah the file's too big cool but i sent it in three, remember he's three the parts. video guy <laughs> <laughs> yeah live video <laughs> shut up coop's horseradish <laughs> at your well, local market uh, that's that's horseradish mustard coop's horseradish yeah. mustard yes well I had, a, I had a different i actually had real horseradish yep. in there too yep. raw i call it raw horseradish yeah. as opposed to a lot of times people the mix fake it with sour. horseradish no they mix it with sour cream now you want the raw horseradish that kind of burns a little yeah bit. it all burns twice yes <laughs> twice. did you want to make a comment there mr mars no sir we have a little time. It's time now to get your pens and paper, boys. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Here we Hemmings. go. Hemmings.com <laughs> sold dun, cars dun, dun, round uh, up. Play along at home. This one like. here, I, I, well, I put these two together because they're both 1978 models. Okay? So the first one is a 78 Chevrolet Corvette Coupe. Okay? With the T-tops. All right? There's nothing fancy about it. It's got uh, stock factory uh, optional aluminum wheels. Not mm-hmm. too far from yours. 
Well, years there is. Years well, you mean you talking about that, that one? one. Yeah. yeah, no. But '78 um, had the bubble back glass, didn't it? Yes. Yeah. And then uh, there was also a '78 Chevrolet Corvette Coupe. That's a, an official pace car. At least that's what it's got on it. So we'll assume that it is a true pace car. Pace car. Okay. This is a lot of clones, and you can buy yeah. the stickers that go on the side. Of We're it. We okay. buying both of them together? No, not together. But I want you to give me a price on the. Original coupe for seventy eight, the Chevrolet Coupe. Okay. It's the two tone. I think that that was a that I don't even you is know, that an option? I'm not quite sure, but this one is painted in a two tone color scheme. Nothing okay? about miles? No, I, we, we don't well, get into that. Miles makes such a difference in the price of that. Okay, thing. well then no you, you you then you do your bid that <laughs> based way. on your miles. Yeah, yeah. your miles. How far is it to your house? Yeah, Nineteen seventy eight. Yeah. So, uh, Mr. Mars, what would you think the seventy eight standard looking Corvette would be? Fourteen nine. Okay, Conrad. Well, I had fourteen down. I wrote fourteen down. Okay, seventeen. Fifteen seven fifty. Okay. Mars, we're, we're all within a couple grand. Now, now the pace car. Let's talk about the pace car. We'll just assume that it's original. How much would you think that the '78 clean-looking pace car would be? Twenty-three. Boston Mars. Nineteen. Eighteen. Twenty-six. Two fifty. Wow. So it's probably got very little mileage on it, and uh, it, it looks very clean. Anyway, okay. It's more than it was new. Yes, most definitely. Yes, it was. My seventy-seven was eleven thousand dollars. Ordered from the factory, and I paid sticker price for it without the trailer package on it. <laughs> no trailer package on a Corvette. God, here you go. Eighty-four Ford Bronco two. OJ eighty-four. No, 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 no. no. This Two's is the little one. Oh, the, no, yeah. you're right. Yeah, yeah. Eighty-four Ford Bronco two. What would you think that they'd get for that? It's kind of like a. Bad brown. It looks clean. Don't know anything about it really. But put, put me down for eight, eight thousand. Mm-hmm. I'll, I'll go seven, seven. I'll go five. Mars is the winner. Five thousand two hundred dollars. I'm off my game today. Um, a 1963 Chevrolet Biscayne. Now I will tell you, I, I, I don't want to give it all away, but. My guess is, is this is probably a 409 car. It's not the one from Richardson's, is it? No. 63, not that one. <laughs> With 60, the stripes down, buffed into the hood? Yeah. Or put the uh, nut the down the carburetor and broke the motor. A 1963 Chevrolet Biscayne. Looks like a 409 to me. Just guessing. Um, two-door. It's a two-door. 25. 25. Mr. Mars? Um. Uh, no miles. A 409 63 Chevy Biscayne. Dual Blue. quad or 33? <laughs> How much? 33. 33? 26. $63,000. Oh, Yowzers. Yes. This is for Jeff. A 1984 right. Buick Estate Wagon. Oh, priceless. <laughs> it's uh, priceless. Okay. Buick Estate Wagon. Uh huh. And what year? 84 Buick Estate with the wood sides on it. Applique, eleven thousand. Eleven thousand. Conrad, seven. Seven. Mars, yeah, I'll go eight. Eight. Nine thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars. Oh. That's four for Mars. Yeah, Mike's he's killing it. Yeah, and it's a clean looking car too. You need that to go would be to work something. at Emmons Auto Parts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, hey, Jerry, would it be okay if we bought an eighty-four Buick Estate wagon? You know what the answer to that would be? You're no. fired. You're fired. You're fired. <laughs> That's it. And then the final one in this game today. Is a 1969 Ford Torino. Mm. I love, love the look of love it. Love the look. Love the look of that car. Yep. Has it got a shaker hood? It looks like it does. Or at least mm. a big uh, induction hood of some sort. I'm not familiar with the model, but I would think that this would probably be... Um, is it a small block? Do they offer a big block in the Ford Torino? Yeah, yeah you can get that. Yeah, yeah but it was like three ninety or something. Whatever, whatever. Yeah, I don't know. It's I'm got lots say of twenty five, twenty five, thirty two, thirty two. Mister Mars, uh, twenty two, twenty two five seventy five. Wow, Mars, Michael. Mars. Wow, look at Mars. 
You know, well, what? you know they buy those. Buy, they buy those kind of cars over there. Next week, lives. whatever he guesses, no, they, I'm going to add a dollar. They live in those kind of cars over there in Niederville. <laughs> just saying, he did have a little smirk on his face, kind of like, okay, that's not funny. Whatever he has, just add a dollar to it. You know. I was watching uh, last week's uh, show, and Jeff did the piece on. Uh, car advertising and one of them oh. was um about i had to sell the harley yeah because of wife of uh, girl wife found pregnant out. wife found out lawyer and wants only, money and the only thing that you missed was they were both their sisters <laughs> <laughs> they were from, oh, that was out of the Niederville gazette in in yep yeah. Both my sisters, wife it's and It's the Mid and County and Review, is what it's called. Oh, okay. The Mid County <laughs> Review. Is it a weekly paper or monthly? No, it was a weekly, yeah. It's do they have a. For a, years, but it was the local. Right. Wife, do they have yeah. a police blotter or anything? Or? Oh, yeah. They had all that. Scandalous yeah, stuff. Police blotter's easy. Yeah. Yeah, in Particularly once a week, yeah, you just call them and say, hey, you know. Let me go down to the courthouse and find out who divorced who and then uh, find out who's suing who. Yeah. Is a who song? got arrested? Who's do do do? Who's do, doing do, who? Yeah. Do, do. Every Thursday it comes <laughs> who's, out. Who's doing who? <laughs> That's true, isn't it? You do. That, you know, you I'm do, supposed to do. do a car review here. Yeah, I got you. I, I just kind of. Well, we led into that quite well, <laughs> didn't we? <laughs> Actually, why, why don't we do the cruise in calendar? Do you have that? You're going to have to pick that out of there as you go from the events calendar. Don't bite me. <laughs> Cruise in calendar. He said, bite me. Did he say that? He said that, didn't he? He did. Sunday, tomorrow, Avalon Diner, Coffee and Chrome. Don will be there signing hero cards. Bring it, because I don't have any of my own. Bring yours. Classic cars of Brazoria County, uh, New Year meet, um, is in Lake Jackson this weekend. Um it's actually it's five thirty tonight. Uh, also at um, five p.m. tonight, Brookshire Brothers cruising in Montgomery at the uh, at the Brookshire Brothers grocery store. That would make sense. Uh, Kima Car Show at the Lowe's in League City starts at five o'clock tonight. Uh, I know um, that was one that uh, um, David Ainsley's son would go to with yep. some regularity. Mm-hmm. Pizza and Cars at Pepperoni's on uh, Highway 6 in Sugarland oh. starts at 1 p.m. today, right I after wonder, the show. I wonder, if, I wonder if you they give away free pizzas. Probably, well, probably a slice or two. Yeah, yeah, maybe. That's not very far. It's about three, four miles from here. Uh, Woodlands Coffee and Cars for a Cause. We know that's, uh, you know, uh, Weldon's pretty engaged in that, and yeah. so is the Northside Mustang Club. That's tomorrow morning. Starts at 6.30 to 10.30, and they ask for a donation as an entry fee. Uh, cars and Coffee at the Aggieland Outfitters and College Station is tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. Uh, Cruise to Spring Cars and Coffee uh, meet starts at 9 a.m. at the Burnham Woods Drive um, in spring at the Sunoco at Burnham Woods Drive. And then uh, Cocktails and Classics at Elevations, the barber shop off of Fondren in Houston starts at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. Cocktails. Cocktails. At 10 and, o'clock. Okay. And the Regional Autocross at the Police State Academy. We talked to... Uh, um, Sergeant Woodard? No, no, no. We talked to... Uh, <clears throat> oh, gosh, my name goes blank. SCCA. Yeah, Richard, Richard Tom Tomlin. Tomlin. My, my mind, I could see his face. I couldn't get <laughs> the name. Yeah, so that's tomorrow at uh, the uh, police station off there at Aldean Westfield. Uh, you can go out and watch, or you can go out and take a drive. I think he said it was $55 if you want to drive. The Conrad's episode gate. is sponsored by Prevagen. <laughs> <laughs> Time now for this hour's car review. 2024 Subaru Impreza. Available trim levels include the base the Sport, and the RS. I had the RS. Compact hatchback, it's called. I like to call it a small station wagon. You can call it what you will. That's what I call it. Seats five passengers, including the driver. All new redesign this year. (laughs) They're no longer building the Impreza sedan. Really? Oh. Nope. It's gone. So then you say, oh, but what about the WRX? Where did it go? It's it done? It's done, at least for now. But it's listen to my review. Exterior features. Sharp looking, lowered front end with a proportional grille. Looks more like a hot rod compact wagon than traditional hatchback. You following my 
my, my, yep. my game there. Yep, yep. Sloping rear hatch glass, attractive front and rear lighting. Silver or gray looks awesome with the black wheels. What could use improvement? A whole hot lo- hot rod line of aftermarket parts, including the WRX in this car. Okay, just saying that. Do you hear me, Subaru? Interior highlights well laid out center stack with a great big infotainment screen. The RS model has color enhanced seating in cloth that is very comfortable. Uh, instrument cluster is good with easy to read gauges. Uh, cargo and trunk room, well, it's small. It's a, this is a small wagon at. <clears throat> What I liked about it, leg room for two adults in the back seat. Kathy and Jeff sat in the back seat. Yeah, we, well, went, we went to your soiree. Oh, okay. That's right. Well, that's a pretty good drive, too. It was. Very comfortable ride. Uh, it does have the passive phone charger in there. I like that as well. What could use improvement? Nothing that I know of. Two and a half liter, four cylinder boxer engine. Boxer meaning a flat. Opposed. Uh, uh, horizontally opposed. Four cylinder. 182 horsepower, which is just the right amount for that car unless they decide they're going to put the WRX package in it. And yeah. This is the uh, more powerful of two engines. The other one has a little bit less horsepower. Get this one. Torque 178 pound feet. CVT automatic transmission. Only. Only. Uh, as far as mileage is concerned, 26 city, 33 highway for combined to 29. I got 29.4 over 377.1 miles. What I liked, great gas mileage. What could use improvement? A WRX version, please. I wrote that right there. Mm-hmm. Ride and handling, rides like a dream. Don's best ride quality winner. Oh wow! Base trim price twenty seven eight eighty five. Price is tested thirty one, and the base model price twenty four one fifteen. Goes up against the Honda Civic for twenty three nine fifty, the Mazda three for twenty five six ninety, and the Mini Clubman twenty nine thousand dollars. That is my review of the twenty twenty four Subaru Impreza. RS. And boy, was it blue. Did did it you was. have a, you said you caught a little sports car and a good ride. Did you kind of have the feeling that you wanted to kind of space? toss it around yeah, a little bit? Yeah. yeah, I did. But it really didn't have that kind of suspension. But again, the WRX package would take care of that. Mm-hmm. Spruce it up. The In Wheel Time Car Talk Show is available 24-7 through the iHeartRadio app. Just look for In Wheel Time Car Talk. We also video stream on Facebook, YouTube, and InWheelTime.com. Podcasts available from your favorite podcast provider. The In Wheel Time Car Talk Show continues right after this quick break. You own a car you love. Well, why not let Gulf Coast Auto Shield protect it? Houstonian John Gray invites you to his state-of-the-art facility to introduce you to his specialist team of auto enthusiasts. We promise you'll be impressed. Whether you're looking to massage your original paint to a like-new appearance, apply a ceramic coating, install a paint protection film, nano-ceramic window tent, or new windshield protection called ExoShield, Gulf Coast Auto Shield is where Houston's car people go. Curbed your wheels? Instead of buying new, why not have them repaired? How about a professionally installed radar detector? Gulf Coast Auto Shield does that, too. Get a peek inside the shop and look at the services offered by getting online and heading to GCAutoShield.com. Better yet, stop by their facility at 11275 South Sam Houston Tollway, just south of the Southwest Freeway, and get a personal tour. Gulf Coast Auto Shield is your place to go for all things exterior. Call them today, 832-930-5655 or GCAutoShield.com. The original group of Loopy Tortilla Restaurants will have you telling your family and friends just what the original recipes mean when it comes to the best fajitas in Southeast Texas. Founder Stan Holt invites you to visit the original Loopy Tortilla near I-10 and Highway 6. Here's the original house that inspired the design of all the rest and the original charm that helped make Loopy Tortilla the go-to destination for Houston Tex-Mex. Speaking of original, nothing can compete with the original lime pepper marinade that everyone will agree makes Loopy Tortilla award-winning beef fajitas the best anywhere. Loopy Tortilla Katie is another location that gives you the same quality and service Houstonians have come to expect at Loopy's. It's located just off I-10 in the Grand Parkway at Kingsland Boulevard in Katy. Find yourself in Aggie Land? Head to the Loopy Tortilla in College Station, located just around the corner from Kyle Field. It's a great place to enjoy those famous frozen margaritas before or after the game. 
headed east to Louisiana, stop in at the Loopy Tortilla in Beaumont. It twos on I-10. You can't miss it. The original group of Loopy Tortilla restaurants invite you in for the best Tex-Mex anywhere. The In Wheel Time Car Talk Show is now part of the iHeart family. Now you'll have access to 24-7 Car Talk anytime you need a fix. Just download the iHeart Radio app and ask for In Wheel Time Car Talk, and there we are. Be sure to save us in your iHeart library for instant access. No matter where you are, you have the best Car Talk Show right on your PC, laptop, or mobile device and never have to worry about finding us again. Of course, you can always get access to our video and audio streams via InWheelTime.com and your favorite podcast channel, and all of this is free to you. From the iHeartRadio app, you'll not only hear our Saturday morning live show, but the best shows of the past, updated weekly. Never miss a minute of up-to-date new car reviews, pre-owned reviews, Conrad's Car Clinic, informative interviews, automotive news, and the most fun car talk show on the planet. Just download the iHeartRadio app, search for In Wheel Time Car Talk, save it to your library, and with a tap of the icon, you'll be in touch with your favorite car talk team. In Wheel Time Car Talk, streaming now on iHeart.com slash In Wheel Time Car Talk. That's it for this podcast episode of the In Wheel Time Car Show. I'm Don Armstrong, inviting you to join us for our live show every Saturday morning, 8 to 11 a.m. Central on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and our InWheelTime.com website. Podcasts are available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, iHeart Podcast, Podcast Addict, TuneIn, Pandora, and Amazon Music. Keep listening, and we'll see you soon.